Hi, my name is Matt Bichelle, Director of Product Marketing here at Aerospike, and I'll be serving as the moderator for this session, Mastering Small Chunks of Data in High-Frequency Ad Tech Systems. Using Aerospike and High-Frequency Ad Management Systems for decision-making and ad delivery, um, our presenter will be covering reasons why choosing Aerospike, um, what, the, what the circumstances were beforehand, and how they changed their architecture and operations model with Aerospike. But before I introduce our presenter, I'd like you to remind you to please go ahead and enter your questions in the Q&A box. We'll have our presenter answer them at the end with us. Also, slides are available for download via that cloud icon, uh, which is labeled resources in session. Our presenter is Thomas Peruzzi, CTO of Virtual Minds. Tom has more than 20 years in digital technology as an experienced CTO, angel investor, and advisor, a lecturer on innovation in technology, as he's an avowed tech lover. And apparently, uh, he's also an occasional jury member. Tom has worked in different countries and continents for national and international companies. Uh, Tom's married, has three kids, does a lot of sport, especially sailing. Uh, and he does this in order to keep his own work-life balance. So with that, I will hand it over to Tom. Please take it away. Yeah, so welcome and thanks for being here, even even if I'm currently sitting in Austria. Um, so close to me, it, it, it's 9 p.m. in the evening. And but but yeah, so thanks for being with you. Thanks for having the chance to share what we have achieved with with Aerospike in the past and and what we are currently doing and what we are what we are aiming for to go forward with with Aerospike. And thanks for the frank words about about me and my person. Um, what I want to What I want to show you now is is a little bit about uh, who we are, what, what makes us a little bit special in our understanding, what are our learnings by, from using Aerospike, where we are coming from in general. So what, what, what are the software design patterns and the operations and development patterns we are coming from? And 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 then a little bit hints and wishes uh, when after two years working in an enterprise agreement with Aerospike and a little bit what what we want to do next together with Aerospike. And, and before jumping into that, um, a, a colleague of mine, Jonathan, had a presentation in 2019 about uh, one of our company's edition and what they do with Aerospike. And what I want to show today is a little bit more, uh, show you a little bit more insights what we're doing and, and, and what KPIs we are going for and a little bit more about some kind of soft changes we aim to achieve when using Aerospike. And another short thanks before we start. It's a little bit uh, to 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 Aerospike uh, Europe, especially the, to the team there because they do a pretty awesome job. Uh, they they do even more configuration than we do. Sometimes it feels like that, but but they're really open and eager to to support us best. And many thanks for that. Yeah, so I, I I hope I can give you some some really valuable insights over the next couple of hour, uh, uh, sorry, couple of hour, over the next thirty minutes. And and in order to to better understand what led us to to Aerospike, I want to give you a short overview of what we are doing and where we are coming from. Um, the company I'm working for currently, as a as a board member, being responsible for technology and product, it's called Virtual Minds. And Virtual Minds, I don't want to say it's a small Google because Google is is is, is much more valuable and 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 ways larger, but but what we have built in the past and uh, on a very homegrown approach is we have built a full ad tech stack. And, and by doing so, we operate on all levels uh, ad tech is, is, is working in. So 20 years ago, and that's really 20 years ago, we have started building the first digital um, publisher ad server in Germany, which was called the, the addition ad server. On top of that addition ecosystem, uh, we've built several other things like uh, like a demand side platform, which is called Active Agent, and we've invested in 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 a in a supply side platform called YieldWeb, and and we support it in growth. and And finally, we bought uh, a DMP called the Edex, which is the leading DMP in mid Europe and in a little bit in the Scandinavic. And and in 2017, when I joined, we we bought AdClear, which is an attribution company, and what we never did during all that time, so you can imagine 20 years of homegrown means a little bit 20 years of tech debt on the one hand side, but it means too that we were driven by some approach like cash is king, 
So we were always quite cost sensitive in the past. And because it was not a typical VC case, it was a homegrown case. And in 2000, and, and a few years ago, it was bought by, by Proceed, uh, a, a public, a, a private TV station and, and media company. And together with Proceedum, we got a little bit, bit more power on, on media and content on the one hand side, and we were able to make use of, of some of the connections of, of, of such large media corporations. And to, to understand, we, we are homegrown. We, we mainly serve premium publishers and premium media companies in mid-Europe, especially in, in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. So that's a little bit our home base. And with the help of 200 people in product and technology, we have to master a quite um, a quite radical number or quite aggressive number of, of queries per second, as you can imagine in the ad tech space. So we are talking of up to, to a million requests per second when people switch on their connected TV devices because we we do a lot in the in the in the CTV area. And we always have to answer at scale. And, and and super fast, and that was one of the reasons why we why we went for for Aerospike. But a little bit more on that later. Uh, just just two more things. We we are driven by 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 technology. We are a technology company. We love cutting at technology, but we we are not aiming for the nitty gritty hottest shit in town. So we 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 are always aiming for cutting edge, stable, long term relationships. Um, we run a privacy by design that's a little bit based on on the situation that we develop everything in germany we operate everything out of germany and and we run and store everything in germany and 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 finally that's that that's that's to understand better why we aim for aerospike is we we, we never aimed to to become one big platform which is more or less one i don't want to say one monolith but one platform um, but what we were aiming for is to 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 modularly combine those the, those different entities and making use of the data which is generated in one place to the best of of the user on another place. So we 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 are quite heavily in data transactions between those companies whenever feasible, applicable, and and okay by law. And that's a, that's a little bit where we're coming from. I'm I'm on top. Virtual Minds is 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 the holding, and and as I said I'm responsible for for product and technology there. But now let's let's jump a little bit more into into technology. Um. So the lessons. I I, I don't want to start with, with with the internals first. I want to start with some lessons we've learned in the not only in the last two years of using Aerospike Enterprise, but in the last five years using Aerospike because we started with the open source version first. What we've seen and that happens quite often then you then you have good technology in place is that you start with one use case and more and more use cases pop up. And and so we, we we started. Thanks God, we 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 started with a pretty good use case in in, in, in the tagging environment with Aerospike and and whatever, as it always happens, when you do something good, um, more and more use cases are popping up, uh, trying to make use of, of Aerospike technology or of the of the technology which is which is really supportful, easy to use, easy to understand, good to maintain. And we are currently, after two years of the enterprise agreement, we are in a situation where we even have to stop them a little bit because it's it's something like you know what. But what my sequel was in in the year two thousand is a little bit aerospike now. Whenever we have to do something and store something, the the first word that pops up pops up is aerospike. So so we we, we see tremendous use of different use cases and and we we, we really we are key value lovers on and, and that's a little bit special to our use case too. The next thing is we we are in a highly volatile environment and and speed is king. It's a little bit the faster the better, and for us, speed does not necessarily mean uh, scaling vertically only. So, scaling on a horizontal level with low cost budget be or low cost budget servers, uh, having good architecture in place which allows scaling is is necessary to us. And and we've seen that with Aerospike. And, and one reason we think that the speed is so so good is is the is the POC approach, which is a pretty good argument for us because we see lovers as well. 
So everything which is with, uh, close to our ad server and which has to do with decision making or stuff like that is, is written in pure parallel C. On our side, we, we, we like C, we love C, we understand C, we, we somehow talk C. So that's, that's a little, uh, uh, another argument for us using, using Aerospike as well. And then what we learned too is when you want to make use best of Aerospike, you have to understand the best practices which are close to, to using such a data store and, 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 and somehow adopting the way you develop to, to the, to the paradigms of the, of the key value store rather than trying to make the key value store fit into, into your software environment. And, and that took us, I, I think it took us around about three to four months to best understand uh, how to make use of, uh, of the best of, of Aerospike. And until that, it's, it's, it, it's a set practice. And what, what we, that's that, that that's not generally just for Aerospike, but that's that, that's something in general. We, we we plan for the long run, and so we 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 are always striving for something which can support us on the long run, and that's a little bit we see key value in 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 our business and in our use case is something which supports us for the long run. Hence, we we were aiming for for a relationship for a long term relationship as well, and and the, and and the last one, and, and and even as important as the others, what we learned from from using Aerospike is. We are driven by efficiency, and and we were, and I will talk about that a little bit later. We were quite heavy open source users only, but Aerospike Enterprise uh, meets the goal to to support our efficiency standards because you know uh, ad tech is a is a, is, a, is a pretty tough place on on on, on some there. Uh, it, it is not even a cent place sometimes in technology, and and cost per thousand ads delivered is is below one cent. And so efficiency is king, and and it really supports us there. And, and we learned how to make use of even an enterprise software to to drive our efficiency. Um, so when when having a closer look, um, um, what what we are doing with Aerospike first, uh, a little bit of view what what led to Aerospike, and 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 that was pretty good interview with Jonathan on that. So I, I I want to I don't want to say I want to recap that. I want to give you a little bit more insights, but but generally saying um in the ad tech space having high cardinality data, uh, super volatile data, uh you have to be a microsecond freak and you I, I think ad tech is one of the of the last resource where you even have people counting CPU cycles for 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 loops and stuff like that on 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 certain levels so 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 we are really micro microsecond freaks we we are burning hard on 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 getting everything done and and you have to understand that uh, the the time the time given to answer an ad request uh, is 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 isn't increasing so it's decreasing year by year because it's an auction system and it's in, in, in it's a competing environment and in parallel, the number of data you may you're willing to make use of in one ad request is increasing by a factor of two or three over over one or two years. So you have to find a balance between between making use of more data, hence becoming faster. And so what we did, and we started that that journey as said, yeah, more or less we we started that journey towards a, a good reliable system in 2011 already. And so we, we we did everything for making trying graph databases and stuff like that because at the end some 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 of our use cases are graph related use cases, but so we we, we tested different solutions we used different ones sometimes we even did some kind of A/B testing, in 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 in, in close to life or in a real life environment with, with some green blue setups, and at the end we we first landed on Aerospike open source and then we jumped to the enterprise later and I will give you some insights about why we jumped to to enter, enterprise at the, at the at the end, and as you can see on the graph there is um, is our request counter where we uh, on on Aerospike counting the timeouts and 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 it explains a little bit that most of the most of the, the green ones are. Uh, most of them where we can where we conserve the requests to closer to one millisecond, 
and 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 only a view between 10 and 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 really just just rare ones are above 50 milliseconds average for for 2500 regrets per second on that cluster and that's some kind of regular view and and that doesn't that looks like the same at 5 a.m the 5 p.m or at midnight so the picture never changes somehow so in in order to to make the right decision, we thought about first of all, we thought about what 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 patterns do we want to to use and what patterns do we want to support, and and so some kind of typical ad tech patterns are is um, even if we have a, a, a lot of peaks and stuff like that, on some kind somehow we are a little, we, we're quite predictable. We have a year over year growth in data of 30%, the year over year growth in, in, in auction requests of, of, of 30%, stuff like that. And, and what we had to learn is that what are the patterns which, which allow us to, to make use of super fast databases with, uh, and, and being able to handle that. And one pattern which, which sorted out was, uh, we have to scale through partitioning. That's somehow a little bit for sure, yes. And in order to do so, we had to embrace redundant and duplicated data. And that led us to, at one point, to the question is, um, how do we, how do we query stuff, which, which was a, a simple SQL thing you had joined before. And, and our average KPI, which we even promised to customers is five, uh, below five milliseconds for 95% of all, all the data we, we do and and we 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 store the data on disk and memory for for research scenarios as well and, and as you can see in the graphs it's it's it, it, it's a quite steady thing we we are somehow serving because because you, at at the end you know you know your your audiences uh, you know your agencies and advertisers and 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 it's a, a quite stable and a quite balanced system at the end so. We have our, our growth and, and, and what we did. So the duplication supports us in managing more or less the IO performance, which means that we have more logos in, in, in parallel. And what we, what we learned too, and that's one, one of, I don't want to say the bad patterns of, 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 of our learning is that, um, the more you distribute the data and the more, uh, tough calculations you have, the more CPU intensive uh, the calculations are, and, and that's something we learned to to, to find a balance between be, between crazy joints, which which are easy to handle on on, on SQL and and distributing the data to be super fast. So having those patterns in mind and 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 and, and those, and those, those those general patterns about, about our. Um, about our use cases, we thought about um, what 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 kind of systems can we use, and so we, we we more or less tested everything which 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 you know from it was not only React and Cassandra. I want to say a little bit more on them, but it was Moonin, it was it was Graphite, OpenTSDB, Ganglia, Influx, and a few more even. And I think the two most promising at the beginning, beside Aerospike, were on the one hand said React, uh, but which we learned later uh, was a little bit buggy and the reaction to fix wasn't given in, in, in an appropriate manner for us. And, and the other one was Cassandra, but the, the, the read write performance wasn't, wasn't good enough for us. As you can see on the graph below, it was, it, it, it was way too, too low. So we, we didn't meet our criteria. And so we even tested Mongo and Couch, so more or less all the usual suspects. And and but we ended up in 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 in, in using Aerospike a, a couple of years ago, and we started with, with with tagging data and 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 checking the behavior of the ad servers, and and then we we, we put more and more load on it, and and finally we ended up uh, still using Aerospike today. So where we use Aerospike today is. On the one hand side, we use it for our tagging store, and tagging means we, we automatically tag users when when they hit the ad server. Uh, then you do some kind of real time information flow to the data stores, and then you use the tag for for things like, for example, retargeting, and and, and that's the general use case. You should be able to retarget someone in in below five seconds, and 
And that's the, the tricky thing is we don't talk about 1 million profiles or 50 million profiles. We talk about 300 million profiles where this has to happen in five in, in below five seconds for a tagging store. And and the other standard use case is is for which is called our DMP store where all the segments of users are stored. And and the segments explode with the more identities you use, either external identities or internals. And so the so we 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 cyclically load the DMP store and and then we make use of the, the stored attributes for targeting different campaigns. And that has to be has to happen in close to real time. And and what we did uh, in the last uh, half a year is we switched our DSP uh, demand side platform. The, the whole bidding process is is now running on on Aerospike as well. And I want to show you what happened to to our new example to to our bidding example. The first thing we switched there is um, the, the matching between internal and external IDs. And so we we, we use Aerospike there to to map from external IDs from our partners or internal users. And uh, so external IDs like third party cookie IDs, first party cookie IDs, stuff like that. We merge that information. And in that case, we, we benefit from the distributed locking, which is pretty awesome in in Aerospike. And and so we, we've never experienced any split brain problem or concurrency issues. And and as you can see, it's the, the average uh, external ID time, it's super low and it, 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 it even lower than microseconds over the whole day, even even during peaks. But we, we expect it to become a little bit more because we put more external IDs now on the system too. But the, currently we serve several hundred million mappings every every day and we can retrieve them in, in closer to one millisecond. The, the next, Use case. Um, is our budget control. So you know you want when you want to enter a console, you want to see what kind of budget did you spend already, what what kind of budget are you willing to spend? And so we we, we have budgets on several levels, like on the creative level, on the campaign level, on the order level. And on the customer level, and and if we want to show real time spendings, and interesting to say is that for the for the long term, uh, we um, we 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 run them on, on on even MySQL and everything within the last forty eight hours to to really dig into on on a very high level and high uh, on a very high detail. We we are using um, Aerospike there, and it's it, it, the incredible scalability, even in spikes. When we, like I said before, when we we, we do activation campaigns in after a TV spot, for example, we, we we get a million QPS on top, and and even that doesn't affect the budget control system. That's super important for our customers, and that's that, that's one of the latest use cases where we where we switched over to to Aerospike, and. And finally, the the last case is um, is to show that whatever we did is and 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 thanks for the question which popped up. But I will come back. I will come close to that question in a second. Is um, as I said before, we have we have a lot of traffic, and and that traffic and that that's very important to understand. We we didn't do anything on the setup of the servers for a very long time. Uh, we we doubled our traffic and 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 without throttling and some logic, it, it would have been even four or five times higher. Uh, but we didn't do anything on memory and disk level on on Aerospike, and it, it it succeeded on the long run. So, in our understanding, the the the, the bidding case is a, is a pretty good example for how to make use of Aerospike. And while while I said at the beginning that we that we really love and embrace C, there's one speciality. Uh, Everything in the in the in the bidder, which I was telling you now for the last five minutes, um, is written in Java. And I have to and we have to say one thing: it everything what what Aerospike has done with regards to low garbage collection paradigms, Java performance paradigms, is is a pretty good fit. So making use of the Java connector, it's it, it's super easy. It's no fancy boilerplate thingy in it. So so our techs really love it. And the, the, there's really good functionality, like the retry and wait policies. And and if we compare it to other Java 
Java connectors. Uh, it, it, it's pretty awesome what you did. And I, I always have to wait a little bit for the slides popping up. Sorry for that. And and to show you one thing, which is which is just a, a little bit about metrics. It's it's from our DSP bidding service. You see that currently there there, there isn't too much data on it, but uh, we we will switch on the next generation of 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 external identities and then. Uh, the, the problem with identities in the setup we are going forward is we, we always have a billion of an, of identity mappings and and it somehow it, it grows exponentially so we will see this the the systems looking like uh, quite fully loaded in, in 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 the next month and and then we will see what's going on but we are pretty sure because all our tests we have done before showed us that even with with, with much more key value pairs in the system we will not see, face any problem but coming back to where we come from and 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 what led us to to aerospace enterprise let me let me say a, a few more words on that it's the first thing is generally we 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 always used uh, open source and but there were a few, few reasons that led us to aerospace enterprise the first thing was the unlimited nodes uh which is pretty good for our low budget node use case which which runs in our data centers the next thing is what we really embraced is the fast restart, the self recovery after the loss of the power and the cross data center replication. Because before, uh, and that sounds a little bit funny maybe, but before when we did this on open source only, we've built our own kind of cross data center replication. So we got rid of code by, by using the enterprise agreement. And we used to, we, we, we are aiming for the Kafka and Spark connectors. And be, be, before, before going forward, I, I, I shortly wanted to ask you uh, what, what's your view on, on the cross data center replication, especially in a hybrid environment where you have on-premise setup and, and cloud setup. So it would be really helpful because we, we, we are aiming for something like that. So maybe you can, you can give us a short hint about how you want to go forward with that. Many thanks. So one more thing, um, it's um, Aerospike for us is not only a great database. As said before, we embraced open source and we did everything uh, with open source. And it was always something like if there's a developer in place and we can make use of it, let's let's go for it rather than thinking about is, is, do we really have to own that knowledge or not? And so with the, with the, with the introduction of Aerospike, we switched to a more uh, a make or buy like approach. Which which is pretty awesome for us. So we we were aiming for even more, um, for for, for more systems and aerospace helped us because it was a good use case. Everyone, every technologist in our company, likes it. And so it, now it's easier saying something like, "Hey, we've seen it with aerospace that it really supports us. Don't you think there's anything else out there which which can do the same job, what aerospace does on on the data level for for something else?" And so that, that that's that's a little bit of a soft or a side effect, if you may call it like that. And and maybe one thing which which doesn't make our life easier, but but, but to, to explain it a little bit, and and that's that's answering one of the the, the questions asked already, is we run everything on premise. So and and in order to do so, we have our own data center provider, which is called Mylock. It's a data center provider serving around about 15,000 servers in Düsseldorf, in Germany, in six data centers. And, and in order to do um, ad tech, we, we have a low latency network. And, you know, if, if you have a low latency network running and, and you can see it with, with tons of peerings and stuff like that in Germany and, and in Europe, uh, the next industry which, which pops up is either, is either banking with hyper trading or it's the gaming industry. So we, we have a few thousand servers running for gaming as well. And so we, we have enterprise hardware in use on, on, on premise with all, and, and, and everything is pretty automated and, and we will end up with an on-prem and on hybrid cloud solution on top. That's what we are currently aiming for. So I don't want to say finally, but a little bit. So what makes for us the difference um, with, 
so how do we interact with Aerospike today? What's the difference to others? What we see is that the, the maintenance requirements are really super low. We don't have to do that permanent tuning, what you were used from other databases before. And the regular calls with the Aerospike team for configuration checks and, and for showing us different use cases where else we can use it or, or make use of it in a better way really support us to, to, to go to a close to zero maintenance effect. And that's that that's what, what what makes with the collaboration. And finally, before I'm running out of time, uh, it's a little bit the question what what other use cases do we see with Aerospike or, or, or to to make use of Aerospike? It's it's low latency, high speed decision uh, uh, storing and making. So everything we are currently aiming for in with artificial intelligence or with uh, with, with machine learning approaches or deep learning approaches, uh, the, the, the result is stored in, in key value pairs on, on Aerospike as well. The, the robust redundant key value storage, uh, we think about no ops scenarios currently. And, 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 and as said before, the distributed locking is, is, is a really strong feature, especially for, for companies like us. And it, it, one one thing popped up. It's always so. It's, it's always a little bit of a question when you ask the guys who are working with uh, on on the machine level, what 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 makes the enterprise software so valuable? It's not this or that feature. Uh, unless all of my all of my operators ended up with voting for the dashboard. And so yes, we we really embrace the dashboard of the of the enterprise edition. And 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 we I don't want to say we can't live without it anymore, but but that that's really super useful. You you have everything you need in a second. You you see the health stake. You see what's going on. Where where do you have to investigate further, in 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 a couple of seconds. And and more or less finally, um, it's a little bit the question: What else do we are we aiming for with? with Aerospike in, in our environment. So currently we are aiming for Aerospike plus Kubernetes for easy deploy and maintain scenarios, uh, especially in, in, in a hybrid setup. So like, I guess, so like, like most of you, we, we, we have more and more Kubernetes running and, and making use of Aerospike and Kubernetes uh, to distribute it super fast this is one of the things which drives us currently. And the second thing is the Aerospike Kafka and Aerospike Spark deep integration, where we are currently in a testing proof of concept mode. And and we, we do see as, as we, we are coming more or less from Spark, we more or less switch over to, to, to Kafka streams. And as Aerospike is more or less the, the fundament of everything, we're currently aiming for, for getting more insights on that as well. And that's what would be really interesting to me is whoever out there, uh, if you have already experience with Kafka and Spark Connector from Aerospike for in and out band traffic, uh, what's, what's your view on that? Is it, is it already doable at, 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 at a million requests per second scale? Because that's, that's what we are aiming for finally. So coming up to, to the end of my presentation, and I hope it was of interest to you, I want to sum up what we've learned and, and how we see Aerospike today in, in our EdTech environment. The first thing is we, we are efficiency driven and, it, and, and what we learned is that um, Aerospike can be managed uh, with a very super small team in operations, in QA. We have to handle something like data depth, uh, data depth so, so everything, so we have to make sure that everything that's in our data streams and data pipelines is exactly what we want it to be and how we understand it should look like. So some kind of functional and integration testing in our data. And and it can be managed with, with, with a very small team in development as well. So it, it, it's a super handy tool. It's fast, it's reliable. Reliability is very important for us and our customers and it scales pretty well, that makes it so valuable to us. Uh, you could even say it simply works as expected. And and we, uh, as I said in the beginning, it, it is a really, uh, uh, somehow it doesn't feel like a, like, like a license agreement. It's, it, it's a pretty good cooperation and partnership on tech as well as on, on, on business level with the, the guys from Aerospike Europe. And, and 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 it it really supports us in speeding up on tech and on the organizational level. So that's a little bit. So I was a, I hope I was able to explain you a little bit about uh, what we are what we are doing, what we are going for. 
Um, we have a use uh, aerospike, and why we think that aerospike is, is, is good for, for high frequency attack systems, uh, as, especially in our case for, for CTV traffic and, and display traffic. On, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a pretty high volatile, high cardinality case. And so I hope it was of interest for you. I hope there was some valuable information for you. If there are any questions, uh, feel free to ask them. And yeah, so the, 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 the stage is yours. I think that's the right sentence. Right? Okay. Yeah, so again, yeah, our, uh, this is Matt again. Uh, a fantastic presentation. Um, so again, people uh, listening in, uh, go ahead and enter additional questions into the Q&A box. Um, I guess the first question, I wasn't sure, Tom, if you answered it, so um, it's a two-parter. Uh, the first part is, is your service deployed on your own bare metal data center or a cloud provider? Yeah, it, it, it's a combination of both. As said, our core provider is, is, is MyLog, which we own. You know, that's you know, if if you own your own data center provider, then it's somehow obvious that you that you go for for your own one. But you know, we 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 have to serve peaks and stuff like that. And bare metal is is not the ideal choice for 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 handling peaks. Only if you have enough money to to have a few ten, twenty, hundred servers on top of it. So currently we are aiming for, for a more hybrid setup and we're going for a hybrid setup. This is why we have chosen to, 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 to Kubernetesify everything, uh, even, even Aerospike. And currently we, we have our own feasibility study proof of concept where, where we, where we run a, a hybrid setup, but it's maybe it's the right time for next year to, 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 to tell you a little bit more about our, our experience in hybrid cloud setup for, for that kind of data. Currently, it, it, it looks pretty good. Um, so we, we are quite satisfied and, and we're still going forward. So there was no show blocker so far in, in, in thinking about a hybrid setup. But as said, the, the operational data currently is, is, is on premise only. So fully under got our it, control. Got it. Uh, well, it'll make sense going forward, and I do know other Airspike customers do do exactly that uh, for bursting. Um, you mentioned a little bit about machine learning use cases. Uh, could you elaborate a little bit about uh, how Airspike is supporting that? Yeah, you know, currently we so so that's why we are that's why I'm I'm interested in learning how others use the the, the Spark and Kafka. Um, connector because currently a lot of our machine learning, um, especially on the DMP level, where you have such use cases like, like finding siblings or, or, or lookalikes or something like you have a segment of, I don't know, people who love white, uh, white sneakers and, and then the segment isn't large enough for, for, for an, for a campaign and you want to look for, for, People or for user profiles which are close to the white sneaker lovers, and and so that, that that's one of the typical AI problems we are facing. And and ideally you can do that in real time, so enriching segments with with lookalikes or siblings as they are called, and and that's where we want to pass the data, which which is processed currently on Spark and it will be processed on Kafka Stream soon. And, and then it should be put into our uh, into our key value store into Aerospike immediately when you have when you have new insights when you have generated new insights um, because it, it, it fits pretty well in, into into our key value setup where a segment is re is represented by segment ID and then and the relevant segment data is, is is in the value part so it it, it would perfectly yeah, no. fit it's it's just learning how to how to to best make use of those connectors yeah no, currently a little bit yeah. well, what happens currently with all that covid-19 thingy is we we are a little bit slower in in in, in our lab setup sure um okay well uh i we are literally running out of time um, so for any additional questions, we'll make sure, uh, Tom, that they get read to you via email, even for on-demand. The Q&A box will be available, uh, again, as are Tom's slides. Um, Tom, is really, we really appreciate everyone in the Airspec community 
I just thank you to, for making this literally a global conference and from presenting uh, late night uh, from from Austria. So we appreciate that. Um, I've been advised by our C, uh, chief product officer encouraging people to attend uh, at 2:30 Pacific time a virtual happy hour. Uh, might be a little late for for you, Tom. Um, if for those that haven't joined the Slack channel, and everyone is welcome, uh, you can you can access that uh, at tinyurl.com slash join dash aerospike dash slack. So with that, uh, Tom, thank you again, and everyone have a great rest of your conference. Yeah, thanks for having the chance talking to you, and I wish you a good ongoing presentation. All the best. Bye-bye.